All right, so before I begin talking about how I would fill out a graphic organizer for the one paragraph summary for the novel Tuck Everlasting, um, just a quick reminder, everything that I point out here, you not may not necessarily agree with. You might find a different um, part of the exposition that you think is more important. Um, more significantly, you might find a conflict that is different than mine. And as long as you can back it up with text evidence, that could be okay. But I will be mentioning as I go along here the compelling reasons why I think uh, the conflict that I came up with is a little different than what most of my students came up with this time. But that's not a bad thing. So we'll begin with the title author genre, your tag. Um, Tuck Everlasting is the title. The author is Natalie Babbitt. As I was looking at some of your graphic organizers, some of you are choosing... A realistic fiction and in a sense you're right because there are realistic characters but there's a really important element to this story that is pure fantasy and that is a uh, water that gives you everlasting life so the genre is actually fantasy you know if you wanted to you could say realistic fiction slash fantasy but it's really just just fantasy okay um, all of you got Winnie as your protagonist um, the exposition, some of you got a little confused because at one time we had a guest teacher and they gave you a different idea of what a exposition was. And if you forget what any of these one paragraph summary elements are, don't forget I have those videos linked in uh, Google Classroom for each one of these. Each video is anywhere from two to three minutes long and they explain them very clearly. So the exposition is um, Winnie is thinking about running away. She's not very happy with her life um, in this current situation. She's pretty disappointed that her parents and her grandmother are always controlling her. Okay. Now, the conflict. This is the most important thing to identify when you're doing a one-paragraph summary because this is every this is what drives the whole novel. And it's usually the most important thing that the author puts in there because it has a lot to do with what they want you to take from the novel. A few of you, well, I, I think several of you, chose that Winnie's conflict was trying to save May because May was in jail and Winnie understood that if, because by that point she believed that they would have everlasting life. Oh, hi, cat. Um, Winnie believed that they would have everlasting life and she knew that she would have to save May in order to protect their secret and protect their family. And that is a conflict for her. And it does get resolved. She helps her. She saves her. But I don't think it's the biggest conflict in the whole story. And the reason is... Well, I don't know. See, it's so tough. Because I was just going to say the reason is it doesn't change Winnie at all. But it kind of does. In a way. She, um, She's not the same timid little girl who's thinking about running away and doing everything her parents say after she helps May. So, you know what? I'm going to call that an alternate conflict. But the conflict I went with, because I think this is more of a turmoil that she has, I think a real conflict is whether or not to drink the everlasting life-giving water that Jessie gives her. Um, and the reason I think that is because she spends a lot of the story dealing with that. So for me, that's why it's the main conflict. And she does change as a result of it, too. Um because we always want to look at a, a conflict that helps change the character. Now, if that was her conflict, before I do any of the rising actions, I'm going to jump right to the climax and the resolution and figure out how it is solved. So we don't see the conflict resolved until the epilogue, where the Tucks ride into town decades later and see Winnie's tombstone. They see that she actually did not drink the water. So we can infer that the Tucks haven't seen Jesse in all this time. We can kind of infer that their little 10-year plan went out the window when they all got in so much trouble, or such near trouble, when they met Winnie and uh, the man in the yellow suit almost compromised their whole secret. So they don't know that she's actually decided not to drink the water until they come and see her grave. So Winnie's resolution actually turns out to be that she ended up living her life as a normal mortal, hu mortal human. She lived and died like everybody else. Um, and we can infer that she probably was not late not so timid anymore because of all the courage that she got from meeting the tucks and standing up for me and doing all that she did okay 
So the falling action, I'm going to say, you know, maybe it's she pours water on the toad, right? Because normally these things happen in order instead of saving it till she was 17 and living happily ever after with Jesse. Good plan for Jesse. Oh, and by the way, I didn't talk about this. The reason I think this is her main conflict is a lot of the story, she's really excited whenever Jesse comes around and her heart starts to beat fast and she gets nervous around him because she really likes him. And I think she's tempted at that young age to drink the water when she does get to be 17. Um, so for me, this is kind of a defining moment. Maybe she has sort of decided when she poured the water that Jesse gave her on the toad. Yes, she could go back in the forest any time and get the water, but that was a, a defining moment. Um, you know, maybe you could even switch that with the climax and the falling action. But anyway, as far as the readers go, we really don't know that she made the decision until that part. So these things don't necessarily come in the right order. We already talked about that. A, a well-crafted novel, all these elements don't always come in this order. Okay? So we've got your tag. That's easy. Your protagonist and what she's doing in the beginning is easy. Now we have to come up with some things that happen between the exposition and the climax. So for the first rising action, because you want to do these in order, I'm going to say she meets Jesse by the tree and she's kidnapped by the tucks. In the second rising action, I'm going to talk about how she talks to Angus Tuck out of the pond, who tries to show her, tries to convince her how serious that drinking the water would be for her. He talks about how he's just so stuck on the wheel, and he wants to keep moving and get off of it. It's an interesting, um, it's an interesting piece of imagery there. We talked about that with all these wheels and circles going on. He is stuck on the wheel. It'd be like being on a Ferris wheel for the rest of your life and never being able to get off. As exciting as Ferris wheels could be, the nice view that they have, you don't want to be on there forever. Um, third rising action. So she met Jesse, talks to Angus. I'm going to say she saves May from hanging, because <laughs> we know May wouldn't die. That would have been really weird, everybody freaking out, um, by taking her place in jail and helping her escape, by helping the whole family that way. So you'll notice in this, I didn't once talk about the man in the yellow suit. It doesn't need to be in the one paragraph summary. If I'm then going to write an essay that's answering some questions, like talk about the wheel and what does it mean throughout the whole story, uh, then I might talk about him. I might talk about some other things. But for a one-paragraph summary, this is all you need. Okay, title, author, genre, Dr. Everlasting, Natalie Bathett, Babbitt, fantasy, Winnie, a protagonist who's thinking about running away, um, and her conflict is whether or not to drink the everlasting water, in the first rising action, she meets Dressy. She's kidnapped by the Tux. She talks to Angus, who tries to tell her that it's really important to think about drinking the water. She then saves May from the public embarrassment of not being able to die while you're being hung <laughs> and helps her get out of jail. And then next, she pours the water on, on, Je on the toad that Jesse gave her. And we can infer that she lives out her life as a normal, mortal heat of being, but probably not so timid. And the climax was at the end with the tux right in and see that she has died. I like how Natalie says that till the very end. Because when I read this story, I was really curious. Was she going to drink it and be with Jesse? Or was she going to say, I don't want to live forever. I don't want to be stuck on the wheel. So there you go. That's all the information you need to write your one paragraph summary.